Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore. Welcome back to my channel. I am so happy you're here. Today I have another Stamp Timber exclusive to share with you for Stamp Timber 2022. This time it's from Brutus Monroe with the Seasonal Gnomes. How adorable are these guys? So there is in everything from fall to Halloween to Christmas represented in this six by eight stamp set. And I decided I could not just pick one. So I created all three seasonal cards today. We're gonna start by stamping all of the images on smooth white cardstock with Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink. I'm coloring all my images in with Copic markers. The color combinations are listed down in the description below the video here on YouTube, as well as over on my blog underneath each individual photo image. So all the Christmas will be under that one, all the fall, and then all of the Halloween. I thought these were so, so cute. I know all of my gnome fans and gnome lovers are going to be crazy about this stamp set. It is one of my favorites from the Stamped Ever 2022 release. In fact, Brutus Monroe's set for 2021 was one of my favorites as well. They just really knock it out of the park for Stamped Timber. I colored in the noses of my gnomes with E11 and 13, and then their beards are gonna be warm gray three and warm gray one. And I'm using kind of a feathering technique. I'm not over blending or anything like that. While I have sped up the coloring a bit, I have hopefully left it so that it's easy to watch. Um, as mentioned in one of my other videos here for Stamp Timber, you guys kind of liked this uh, speed of coloring. So there is going to be quite a lot of coloring on these cards. They are very coloring heavy. And because I couldn't pick just one <laughs> image or season to represent, uh, it is a lot. I decided with this Halloween witch gnome here or sorcerer, I didn't want to do the feathering technique around the broom handle, so I just colored over it. And then I'm going to go over the broom handle with my brown colors. And by the time I add the dark, I think it really just kind of blends it all out. That was me being super lazy. But it, it turned out super cute. And then I'm gonna use the same E55 and 57 that I used for the broom handle for the barrel basket. And I'm just kind of doing a feathering technique for this as well. And I don't want to over blend because I want to kind of retain the look of the basket being wood or the bushel basket. I think I said barrel. I meant bushel basket. So next, we're going to move on to reds, and I decided to do our 35, 37, and 39 for anything I'm coloring in with red. And I do have to make a quick pause because my red marker is almost out of ink. And I'm gonna have to refill it. And I wanted to go really red heavy. In full disclosure, the backgrounds were created first and allowed to air dry. I'm just showing you the focus stamp set first, um, and then we'll move on to the backgrounds for the sake of the video. But I knew already because the background of the Christmas card is in greens, that red would really pop off of that. And so that's why um, his hat and the presents and the bows and everything have a lot of red in them so that they really stand out against the green background. And I love the accessory images that go along with the main gnomes. So each individual gnome has two, like what I call at least two, I think the fall ends up having a few more, but accessory images that go with them. The Christmas gnome has a reindeer, which how cute is the reindeer? I literally just wanna make gift tags with that little reindeer, I think he's so cute. Um, and the present, the fall has the 
bushel basket and the turkey. And again, the turkey is so cute. Couldn't you see making place card settings for Thanksgiving with that little turkey? So, so cute. Um, and then the Halloween has the jack-o'-lantern and then the black cat. And I will say that the black cat is solid black and that's why I chose not to use it. <laughs> it's it's not my favorite, but there's so many other cute things that it's okay. Now, there are two leaf images, and I did stamp both of those to use um, with my fall or autumn themed card. And I didn't necessarily make mine Thanksgiving. In fact, I used the Happy Fall Y'all for the greeting. There's also about two sentiments per season. For Christmas, there's joy and gnome for the holidays. For Halloween, there's happy Halloween and spooky. And for the fall, there's happy fall, y'all, and thankful for my gnomies. And then there's from my gnome to yours, which um, kind of would work with anything. Very cute. I like the little punny play on words. For the brim of the hat and the pom-pom, I did use my warm grays very lightly. I blended out with the colorless blender and then I took the Stardust glitter pen and glittered up uh, the mittens, the brim, and the pom-pom. And then we are going to go in with a couple of shades of green for the present. So pretty traditional coloring for the Christmas card, I'd say. but absolutely adorable. And then we're just gonna blend that out. And one of my favorite things to do is to add customization with a white pen. And I am going to take a white pen and draw in like some little diagonal lines. And I at first was just gonna leave them one direction, but I totally didn't draw them in straight. And so what I ended up doing <laughs> is going back the other way that disguises the fact, first of all, I do like plaid, but it also disguises the fact that I didn't do my best job drawing straight lines. <laughs> I'm gonna try to hit everything else that is red I kind of went off script. I was trying to color everything in that was the certain color at the same time, and then I finished our Santa Gnome. And then I decided to finish the package before finishing those apples. And I decided to do green for this one as well, although we are not gonna draw a design on this one. We're just gonna leave it as is. And then we'll go in and draw in or color in the darker areas for our, our apples. And I do think any of these smaller images, especially, um, I could see doing gift tags with like, do a bigger gift tag with the gnome. And then you could do like a little circular gift tag, like layered gift tags. I love to layer them together with the smaller image. And like that smaller tag could have the two from on the back or something. There's a lot of really fun things I think you could do with this stamp set. I foresee this being one of the uh, most popular ones for this stamp timber release. The pumpkin I am gonna color in with YR15, which is called pumpkin yellow, and it's my favorite base for, for orange pumpkins. And then I like to use E08 as my dark color, which is an earth tone. It's actually brown, the color is called brown, but I think it's orange-ish. And then I use YR27 too as my um, mid-tone color before going back over it with my pumpkin yellow light color for those great highlights. So I went ahead and did my jack-o'-lantern and my pumpkin at the same time. And then we will go back. I was going to try to avoid some of the highlight areas on the jack-o'-lantern and I ended up not. Um, I just colored over the whole thing. We're gonna take a white pen and go back in and do the highlights around the eyes and the mouth. It was a lot easier than trying to color around them. That was just me being lazy. 
a little earth tone for the stems, which is E57 and E55 again. I just can't get over the reindeer and the turkey. I think they're so cute. So we're going to use E40, 43, 44, and 47 for our reindeer. And I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing with E40, which is a super light um, kind of base. And then I'm going to blend in a little E43 for the antlers and go in with E43 anywhere that is going to be the darker brown tone. Um, it's our shading color for the lighter areas, but for the darker areas, that's more of our base color. And then a little R00 for the insides of the reindeer ears and cheeks to give it a, because it is cutesy and fun. E47 for the hooves, and then we will do E44 as our darker color for the rest of our reindeer and then blend out with E43. I did opt to make it more of a Rudolph reindeer. We're gonna give him a little red nose. And then I do want to take a black jelly roll pen and add the detail back into the eyes. I'm not sure if I do it right now or not, but for both the turkey and the reindeer, I did use a black jelly roll pen to add that detail back into their eyes. For the broom itself, not just the handle, I started with E40 and I decided no, I didn't like that. So I'm gonna do YR30 and then YR31. And finally, a little YR24. And I like that a lot better. I think it's gonna be a lot showier. I like the color much, much better. But a lot showier for the background we're gonna place this on. And then a lot of the colors on the gnome are awfully dark. For our two leaves, we're going to use a lot of the same colors, but one's going to be much darker than the other. So this is YR 31, 23, and 24, and the small one will be YR 23, 24, and 27, I believe. And it's so it's just one shade up, actually YR 24 and 27. So it's just like one what I call like one step up from the previous leaf. So it's a little more orangey where the other one's a little more yellow. Let's color in our witch gnome or sort. I keep saying it, but I think it's more like a sorcerer gnome. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, it does have a broomstick, so maybe it is a witch. Um, I am using some of my favorite blue violet colors here. Um, they definitely have a gray undertone, so BV 2025 and 23, I believe, but the exact colors are listed down below. They have a gray undertone, but they definitely have a little bit of that blue flavor as well, but I personally really like that. I didn't want mine to be super bright purple. I wanted them to be a little bit more uh, moody, I guess, if you will. This is a really fun color combination. And then you can see I just going in with my shading, making sure that there's all that great detail. And then the outfit I decided to do, it looks like it's got stripes on it. It would be kind of fun to do it kind of candy corn color, but I decided to do like a purple gray color combination, which you'll see the, the remaining stripe and the gloves as well as the band on the hat are gonna be some cool grays. The buckle is YR 31 and 23. So it's kind of along the same lines as the broomstick. And I'm just gonna go in with C8 and C5. And these are the cool grays. And I think that this really works nice with the gray. So it's kind of a purple black, let's say, color combination. Super easy, quick, and oh so, oh so adorable. So basically what we have left is the fall. And I will say why I left it till last, I was not sure how I wanted to color in the fall hat. So when I'm doing that, I often will think of 
what I want to do while I'm coloring the things that I already have a really good idea for. If I'm mass producing like I did here, obviously I was working on three cards at once. Um, and just to be completely transparent, the background was created, so I did know what I was going to be building onto. But I knew I just wanted fall colors. And so ultimately, I decided, I mean, I, I even went to the turkey first because I wasn't exactly sure what to do with that hat. And I started with my YR colors and did kind of a yellow stripe and an orange stripe that's going to be very similar to our leaves. And then I decided to do this brown, the same brown that I'm doing for the turkey right now, the 40, 43, and 44. And that was it. That was the right color combination. So um, sometimes just working it out in your head prior to coloring is something that's needed. So I did a like little yellow stripe for the tail and then we're gonna do like a little orangey stripe a brown and a red. And I am going to go in with a darker red than what I've used for Santa or Christmas. That's going to be what I kind of call my moodier red color combination. It's R56 and 59, I believe. And it's definitely blends in or works better, I think, for fall. So cute. I love this turkey. Okay, Mr. Thankful Gnome or Fall Gnome, we need to figure you out. So I did start with my yellow stripe and it took about two stripes before I decided I liked it and I ended up really, really liking it. Initially, I thought I would do a red stripe and I'm really glad that I waited and that I didn't do one. Um, I like it better like this. So that's why our 30, 31, and 24, I think. Maybe it was 23. And then this is why our 24 and 27, which is going to give us that orangey stripe. And I like this. And it really almost looks like candy corn at this point. <laughs> but um, then we're going to go on to the brown. And I'm simply going to repeat those stripes throughout. So this is E43 and 44. And I love it. I think this color combination is super cute for fall. Was really, really happy with this one. Now for his outfit, I'm just going to pull some of these same colors down to the outfit itself. A lot of all of the gnomes actual clothing be back behind beards and, and whatever they might be holding in their hands. There's not a lot of it. So I didn't spend like a ton of time thinking, do I need to make this contrasting? How do I need to make it match? I mostly just tried to pick something that I used for the hat and went from there. It was about this point though that I realized part of his beard does show down below the pumpkin. So I need to grab my warm grays and color that in but i think it's almost like they have a hat and then the rest of not hat a top and then the rest of their outfit i can't really tell back behind the present so like i said i just kind of went with it and colored it in with whatever and then we have the rest of the hat still left to do too once this is done, I am going to die cut everything. I did not have the dies in time for creating my cards, so I did use the Brother Scan and Cut to die cut these images, and I felt like it did a really good job. Some sets I feel like work better than others, and this was one of them that I felt like cut really, really well. So now we're ready to create backgrounds, or I'll show you how I created the backgrounds. I did do them ahead of time so that they would have plenty of time to dry, and I feel like the backgrounds are one of the things that just ties it all together. I also went ahead and took my white pen, and I am adding additional detail. So some white dots to the Santa hat, some highlights to different things, especially the gnomes' noses, um, the apples, 
just little things, not overly adding highlights, just a few little things here and there. And that will be great. So for our Christmas background, we are going to use the Simon Says Stamp Snowflake Cluster. I did put pixie spray on the back of my stencil for something this detailed. I really feel like it works best if you can temporarily adhere it to your cardstock. It doesn't shift. And I definitely don't want to lose the detailing of the snowflakes. I am combining iced spruce and rustic wilderness. So when I was talking earlier about picking my color choices for the Christmas gnome, knowing that my background was green, I knew the red would really pop off this color combination. I've talked a lot about ice spruce and how it's kind of my favorite this year. Who knows why? It's been out for a while, but I absolutely love it. And so um, I thought, let's try combining it with Rustic Wilderness and see if it works. And I love it. I kind of really dig this color combination. So I kind of put the iced spruce down in a couple of areas first. And then I am going in with Rustic Wilderness. And then I'm going in filling in with iced spruce. Just a nice kind of color combination. It's going to give us a two-tone green background. I'm inking the whole thing and when I peel it off, you're going to see what great detail is left. Maybe. <laughs> so the pixie spray stuck it down pretty good. I'm kind of being careful peeling this off. And look at that beautiful snowflake background. So now I'm going to put this in a splatter box and I am going to drip water. I'm still waiting for my order with my new distress sprayer to arrive. I did finally get it ordered. Um, and I am just going to tap droplets of water. I wanted bigger droplets of water all over this. And then I'm going to blot it dry. The distress oxide ink is going to ox you know, it's going to give you those great oxidized spots and splatters, um, kind of even make a couple of little blurry lines in the snowflake, which I like. And then I'm going to reactivate the white gouache that's still in my box. I just put a little water on it and I'm going to tap some white splatter all over this. And I'm even going to take some Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust and I am going to splatter that for some sparkly little splatter all over the design as well. Then I'm going to set this aside to completely air dry. I love it. I could make this background in every color. I do have a video on my channel where I used this background last year in 2021 where I did blues and purples and it was so pretty. So there is our background for our seasonal Santa gnome. For our Halloween card, this is not going to be anything new. You guys probably already guessed that it was going to have to be Moon Masks from Tim Holtz because I can't get enough of these. These also have been out for about a year. And while I used them when I first got them and was really excited, I feel like I have used them more this year than ever before. And I love them. I think they are amazing and they are a fantastic way to add um, moons and really get really fun cards, um, scene building cards is what I want to say. So I did tumbled glass for that glow around the moon and then I am adding blueprint sketch, I'll add villainous potion, and finally black soot which is what I call the magic. That's where the magic comes in and it really, that black soot ties it all together. It makes it amazing. So I'm just gonna blend, 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 blend. Make sure we're getting a beautiful seamless blend, but I felt like I just had to for the Halloween card. I know I've done this same, very similar technique for a lot of Halloween cards lately, but it is my favorite. And I say if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> So tumbled glass for the moon. Who knew that the moon would look so awesome in tumbled glass? This was completely something I tried not knowing and I absolutely love it. And then I'm going to do blueprint sketch, whatever's left on my ink blending tool for the moon 
detail. And then I like to always go over it again to kind of dull so it's not so sharp and perfect. Now we need some Villainous Potion because our Halloween card for sure needs some purple. And you can see I'm kind of doing that swoopy motion just out and around the moon. Layering on all of this great color. And going back with Blueprint Sketch a little bit in a couple of places. And even overlapping the moon just a tiny bit, I think it kind of gives it that look of clouds in front of the moon. And now it's time for black soot. And black soot, again, is what gives it the moody, perfect finishing look for a Halloween card. So we're going to go over this whole thing with black soot. Well, not the whole thing, around the edges and just kind of blend it into the center. But look at that, you guys. How beautiful is this background? I love it. For all of my backgrounds, I did start with four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels, but I will be trimming each and every one down to four by five and a quarter. In my splatter box, I am going to place the solid moon mask back over the moon and we're going to splatter the background with white and liquid stardust. And that way we don't get any splatter on the moon itself. And then we will set this background aside to completely air dry. So the final background is our fall background. And I knew kind of what I wanted to create, but I left it till last because I needed to think about it. There are new birch tree stencils from Lawn Fawn and I think they're going to be perfect. So this is another stencil that I think using pixie spray on the back is really great for. We're going to take the tree part of the stencil, not the mask, and we are going to ink it up with gathered twigs and ground espresso distress oxide inks to get our trees. And then I thought it would be fun to make it appear that the moon is back. You know, you're looking through the trees back into the moon. And so um, we are going to finish inking the tree. I want to make sure that the trees are all inked. And then we want to take the smaller moon mask. So for the Halloween card, I use the medium size. We're going to be using the small size for this card. I am going to take the solid moon mask and we are going to kind of pop it up in that upper right corner again. And I'm gonna just lay it down. I didn't put pixie spray or anything on it. I could have, but I do have pixie spray on the back of the mask. So this is the mask for the tree. And we're going to cover up our tree and also hold down the moon at the same time. and we're gonna ink up the sky. So I'm gonna actually start with the ground and I'm gonna do a little rustic wilderness down along the bottom edge. And then we're going to use Blueprint Sketch and black soot for the sky. So it ends up kind of being another night sky, but a different kind of look, maybe not so spooky. I just wanted it to really have this great fall look. The colors are really bright, which I want my colors to be a little moodier. And so again, black soot is a great way to kind of just deepen and darken those colors and make them a little more interesting. And I love that the masking stencil for the birch trees really holds that moon in place. Looks like I missed a little spot on with the pixie spray on my mask, but it's all good. So we're going to go in with black soot now. And we're just going to kind of dirty it all up is what I'm going to call it. Just kind of add that dark moody feeling throughout.
And then when we remove that and remove our moon mask, look at that, you guys. I was so excited that that turned out. I, I can't even lie. So now I did decide to do my moon in a different color. My other favorite color for moons is antique linen. I like it so much better than a yellow for a moon. I always tried to used to do, I always used to try to do yellow and I did not love it at all. I'm trying to think, what was I doing? Oh no, I need the masking stencil. I picked the wrong one. So now that I gave it the base of antique linen, I'm going to take the detail stencil and I'm just going to take some gathered twigs and go over that. And because I'm using the brown or that light brown, it didn't do anything to my tree, which was great. I probably could have put my mask, the original stencil, pardon me, back in place. But look at that moon. Oh my goodness, you guys, I was so excited that it worked out. So excited. I'm going to place the mask in place now, and I'm going to splatter. I forgot to put the moon in place, but I just kind of avoided it. It worked out. I should have probably put the moon down first. And I'm just using whatever leftover splatter from my box. And there we go. All three backgrounds. So I have die cut my images and we are going to put it all together real quick. Here is our Christmas background trimmed to four by five and a quarter. I popped up my Santa gnome with foam adhesive. We're going to pop up the present with foam adhesive and the reindeer. Had some trouble figuring out where I wanted to put my present. But isn't that green background so pretty? Who would have thought ice spruce and rustic wilderness would look so good together? I love it. So super simple, but the stenciling in the background really shows off these great seasonal gnome images. Make sure with the reindeer or anything else that you're overlapping that you don't put the foam adhesive over anything that's overlapping. And there's that black jelly roll pen for the eyes. Let's go ahead and do our seasonal fall gnome. You guys, that scene, I'm just blown away. I love the birch trees and the moon mask. I hope you guys love it too. I think that would be really cool for Halloween cards as well. And then of course we've got our little bushel basket and our turkey. And then I am going to take my two little leaves and tuck those to the left of my gnome. So one kind of back behind and one in front. I think that's where my greeting is going to go. And then we have our Halloween card. We're going to pop up our witch, add the jack-o'-lantern. I think they're both kind of just floating. <laughs> I don't know. And then we are going to start stamping sentiments. I am going to use Happy Halloween for the Halloween card and I'm going to stamp that right on the moon. We're going to stamp it with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. I love the white. I think it stands out really nicely. Now, one thing about these sentiments and anything else I have on the card, there's not a whole lot else. So there is a lot of quote unquote white space here. I felt like I needed some more images because I chose not to use the cat from the Brutus Monroe stamp set. I decided to go through my stash and I grabbed the Spook Up Some Fun from Simon Says Stamp. It has some bats. Any stamp set that has some bats in it would work here. Anything. And I took the three bats and I am going to kind of line these up and stamp them with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And I think the bats really finish this design. 
don't be afraid to mix and match with things that you already have in your stash. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at those bats. I love it so much. For our fall card, again, my sentiment's going to go over the moon area, even though those trees are in front of it. I just think it looks more natural there. And I did use Happy Fall, y'all. I'm going to heat emboss that with white embossing powder as well. And I kept thinking that I had some embossing powder flakes. And then the snowflake background is busy. Um, there's not a super great place to add the sentiment like directly on the background. I didn't feel where it would show up. So I decided on a scrap piece of white cardstock to stamp Gnome for the Holidays with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I will die cut that with a sentiment label die and then simply pop that up with foam adhesive right underneath my Santa Gnome. I feel like that's the best spot for it on this card. And I'm just gonna kind of tuck it underneath the edge and it kept moving and I couldn't get it lined up. There we go. So here are our backgrounds and now all we have left to do is embellish. I am going to use some white pearls. These are pretty pink posh white pearls for this card and I'm just gonna kind of follow the snowflake design and add them here and there. Not to every little opening in my snowflake background, but just kind of wherever, wherever the mood strikes to add that fun little bit of embellishment. I will add a little red heart underneath the sentiment along the bottom edge. And this is the only card I ended up adding a heart to. I know everyone is surprised. I just didn't feel like the others maybe needed it. I probably could have, but we're gonna add some different embellishments to those. Then for our Halloween card, I'm going to add Silver Star Confetti. And we're just gonna kinda add that all over. Little extra bit of sparkle. And you guys know how much I love my little embellishments. And then for the thankful card, or the happy fall card, I should call it, I am going to use matte gold stars. I felt like the gold just worked better for the, the fall themed card design. I'm gonna adhere each of these to a white top fold card base. It's gonna leave a nice white border all the way around the edge of the design. And we're all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for the Stamp Timber 2022 Brutus Monroe and Simon Says Stamp limited edition exclusive called Seasonal Gnomes. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Stamp Timber exclusive limited edition stamps that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to have you there as part of our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.